Today we're peeling back the layers of a legend, diving into the life of one of my favorite figures from American history, General George Patton. A name that conjures images of a strategic mastermind and a man of unwavering determination, yet also a figure married by controversy and a famously volatile temperament. Patton, a man who believed in destiny and even reincarnation, found himself at the epicenter of the 20th century's defining conflict. But beyond the battlefield accolades and the myths, who was the real George Patton? How did his staunch beliefs and iron will shape the course of history? Welcome to American History Gazette, and enjoy the video. In the rolling hills of California in 1885, George Smith Patton Jr. was born into a world of privilege and martial tradition. From his first breath, Patton was swaddled in tales of heroism and valor stories of his ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, etching a path of glory that he was destined to follow. Raised in a household where military strategy was discussed over dinner and bravery was the currency of honor, young Patton's imagination was captivated by dreams of ancient warriors and epic battles. Patton's journey into the annals of military history began at a young age, galloping on horseback through the family's vast estate as if he were leading charges into enemy lines. His education was a tapestry of classical literature and languages, fencing, and horsemanship, molding him into a renaissance man with a warrior's heart. It was at the prestigious Virginia Military Institute, and later, the United States Military Academy at West Point, where Patton began to sharpen his mind and body for the trials of combat, despite struggling with dyslexia that made academics a battleground of its own. But it wasn't just the classroom and training fields that forged Patton's character, it was also the fiery crucible of the 1912 Stockholm Olympics, where he competed in the modern pentathlon, demonstrating his prowess in fencing, swimming, shooting, horse riding, and running. Patton waged war on the Olympic stage, finishing fifth in an event that tested the medal of the world's finest athletes. Patton's baptism into the realm of international conflict came with the outbreak of World War I, where he swiftly rose through the ranks. Serving in the newly formed United States Tank Corps, Patton found his calling amidst the roar of engines and the clatter of machine gun fire. Under his command, tanks became instruments of breakthrough and maneuver, challenging the stalemate of trench warfare that had consumed Europe. In the Battle of St. Miel, Patton, leading the charge, plunged into the fray with his men, his saber flashing, embodying the spirit of the cavalry officers of old. It was here, in the mud and blood of the French countryside, that Patton's theories of aggressive, fast-moving armored warfare were born. Wounded in battle, he refused to yield, his indomitable spirit only fueled by the chaos of combat. This crucible of war solidified Patton's reputation as a fearless leader and an innovator, setting the stage for his legendary exploits in the larger conflict yet to come. As the dark clouds of World War II engulfed the globe, George Patton emerged as a beacon of American military prowess, ready to etch his mark on history with the tip of his tank's cannon. With Europe under siege and freedom hanging by a thread, Patton was summoned to the forefront of the United States Armed Forces, poised to unleash his aggressive brand of warfare on the Axis powers. His first major test came in North Africa, where under the glare of the desert sun, Patton transformed a demoralized and beleaguered force into a formidable army, striking fear into the hearts of the Africa Corps. His leadership in Operation Torch and the Battle of El Guitar showcased his brilliance in maneuver warfare and his unwavering belief in the offensive. But it was at the invasion of Sicily where Patton truly became a legend. Racing against time and rivals, he spearheaded a rapid and relentless advance that dazzled friends and foes alike, capturing Palermo and pressing on to Messina. Patton's audacity on the battlefield was matched only by his flair for theatrics of it, captivating the imagination of the American public and solidifying his status as a wartime icon. Yet, Patton's meteoric rise was not without its shadows. Controversies and clashes with superiors would sideline him, but like a phoenix, he would rise again, taking command of the Third Army in the wake of the Normandy invasion. In a whirlwind campaign, Patton's forces liberated towns and cities with a speed and ferocity that seemed to embody the general's own relentless spirit. His legendary dash across France, relieving the besieged city of Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge, cemented his legacy as one of the most formidable and effective military commanders in American history. General Patton's leadership style and philosophy were as distinctive and potent as the man himself, 
a blend of old world chivalry and modern warfare pragmatism that left an indelible mark on the US military and the art of command. Patton believed in leading from the front, embodying the ethos that a commander's place was not behind his troops, but alongside them, charging into the fray. This approach was not merely about tactics, it was a statement of trust and solidarity with his men, a way to instill confidence and morale among his ranks. Patton's philosophy hinged on the principles of audacity, speed, and aggression. He famously asserted that a good plan, violently executed now, is better than a perfect plan next week, encapsulating his preference for swift, decisive action over prolonged deliberation. This mindset was reflected in his conduct of warfare, where he utilized armored divisions not just as support units but as spearheads of his lightning-fast offensives, often catching the enemy off guard and rewriting the rules of engagement. Moreover, Patton had an unwavering belief in the importance of appearance and discipline, convinced that these elements were integral to a unit's fighting spirit. He insisted on strict adherence to military decorum, from the polish of a soldier's boots to the precision of a parade formation, seeing these details as manifestations of a deeper commitment to excellence and duty. Yet, for all his emphasis on discipline and ferocity, Patton was also a student of history and a lover of poetry often quoting classical literature and drawing lessons from the past to inspire and educate his troops. His speeches, laced with references to historical battles and figures, were not mere oratory exercises, but tools to connect with his men on an intellectual and emotional level, to foster a warrior ethos that transcended the mere act of fighting. His storied career was not without its share of controversies and challenges, however, which tested the bounds of military protocol and public opinion. Perhaps the most infamous incidents were the slapping episodes in 1943, when Patton, in separate instances, struck soldiers suffering from battle fatigue in military hospitals in Sicily. These actions, deemed unacceptable by military leadership and the American public, cast a shadow over Patton's otherwise brilliant military record. The incidents prompted General Dwight Eisenhower to reprimand Patton privately, forcing him into a period of reflection and temporary obscurity away from frontline command. Patton's outspoken nature and penchant for making politically charged statements also posed challenges, both for himself and his superiors. His candid comments often blurred the lines between personal opinion and official policy, leading to diplomatic headaches and public relations dilemmas. Notably, his post-war remarks in which he compared the Nazi party to the American political parties and expressed his views on the Soviet Union straight into the realm of political controversy, raising questions about the role of military leaders in public discourse. Furthermore, Patton's aggressive tactics and relentless push for advancement occasionally put him at odds with other Allied commanders and strategy. His belief in rapid, decisive action sometimes conflicted with the more cautious approaches favored by his contemporaries, leading to tensions within the Allied command structure. General Patton left an indelible mark on World War II through not only his battlefield exploits, but also his involvement in one of history's greatest deceptions, Operation Fortitude. This intricate ruse was designed to mislead the German high command about the location of the Allied invasion of Normandy. Patton was chosen to command the fictitious 1st U.S. Army Group, positioned in southeast England to suggest an invasion across the narrowest part of the English Channel. The choice of Patton for this role was strategic brilliance. His notoriety as an aggressive commander made the existence of the Army Group all the more believable to German intelligence. By leveraging his reputation, Patton played a crucial role in the success of the D-Day landings, demonstrating that warfare is not only fought on the ground, but also in the minds of the enemy. Another story that encapsulates the essence of Patton's character were his iconic ivory-handled revolvers. Patton's pair of Colt single-action army revolvers with ivory grips was more than personal preference. It was a statement. Contrary to popular belief, Patton was known to clarify that the handles were not made of pearl, a material he considered suitable only for a New Orleans pimp, but of ivory, denoting both elegance and ruggedness. Patton's revolvers weren't merely for show. There were occasions when he personally used them in combat, demonstrating his willingness to engage directly with the enemy. The legacy of General Patton, a titan of military strategy and an emblem of American bravado, is a complex tapestry woven with triumphs, controversies, and an ending shrouded in mystery. His indomitable spirit and relentless drive propelled the Allies to numerous victories during World War II, cementing his status as one of the greatest military commanders of the 20th century. However, it was not only Patton's life that captured the public imagination, 
but also the enigmatic circumstances surrounding his untimely death, which have fueled speculation and conspiracy theories for decades. In December 1945, mere months after the end of World War II, Patton's career was abruptly cut short. Suffering from injuries sustained in a seemingly innocuous car accident in Mannheim, Germany, Patton died in a hospital in Heidelberg 12 days later. The accident, which occurred under clear weather conditions and involved a low-speed collision, raised questions about its severity and the subsequent fatal outcome for Patton, who had survived the perils of multiple battlefields unscathed. The mysterious nature of the accident, combined with Patton's outspoken criticism of post-war policies and his contentious relationship with other high-ranking officials, have led to an array of conspiracy theories. Some speculate that Patton was the target of assassination due to his dissenting views on the Soviet Union and the handling of post-war Europe, suggesting that powerful figures sought to silence him. These theories are further fueled by discrepancies in accident reports, the absence of a thorough investigation, and Patton's own premonitions of being silenced. Despite the unresolved questions surrounding his death, Patton's legacy remains undiminished. He is remembered as a brilliant strategist, a fearless leader, and a stalwart defender of American ideals. His contributions to armored warfare and his principles of leadership continue to be studied by military scholars and commanders. The Patton legend, bolstered by the dramatic circumstances of his death, endures as a symbol of American military prowess and the complexities of history. As the years pass, the mystery of Patton's death continues to intrigue and invite speculation, adding a final layer of intrigue to a life that was anything but ordinary. Whether viewed as a tragic accident or a nefarious plot, the end of Patton's life serves as a poignant coda to the story of a man who lived by the sword, leaving a legacy that is as enduring as it is enigmatic. General Patton is one of the most fascinating characters in American history. There's no doubt about it. So I was very excited to make this video for you guys. I think that quote there at the end really encapsulates who Patton was as a person and as a general. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on Patton, and I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the mysterious circumstances surrounding his death. I want to hear what you guys think. So make sure to drop your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below. If you want to support our channel, make sure to check out our Patreon down in the description. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on our next adventure.